care about letting the world know that you took a polygraph and you passed with flying colors? I mean, like... And the I, justice system and all the scales of justice in our society have found you not guilty. Hello, beautiful human. I'm Zach. That is Dan. Yeah, Welcome yep. to the studio for the first time ever. Hello, Mosey. Yo. Yeah, yeah. Can you explain to me the process of like what's going on in your mouth, please? Oh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've actually had this since I was like 15. Not these ones, obviously, but like just like it's called grills. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I've had them for a long time. So it just feels natural. But, you know, diamonds, I don't know. Do I you, think it's cool. Y you rap with them in? No, no. Well, I mean, like, if I'm performing, yeah, but, like, in the studio, no. Got it. So I have, like, a little lisp and stuff. So. It, are they hard to remove? No, no. Oh, my God. Do you have teeth? Of course. <laughs> Do you have <laughs> teeth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you, can you eat with this? No, I don't. No. Well, I mean, you... People do, but I, I don't. I don't. I, you know, they get dirty and stuff. So, I... is it painful? No, no. It's just like a retainer, I would assume. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. No, it's faded to your teeth, so it just goes. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thanks for being here. We have a lot of music to discuss, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've listened to it, of course. The new song, "Life Goes On." Yes, sir. We plus you have a catalog that is pretty wild to wrap mm -hmm. one's mind around. What is your relationship? like with your old music um i mean i love i love my old music every time i hear it i don't listen to it like it's been a, like i don't know a lot of those songs are like old so to me i've heard them so many times i don't listen to them on my own no more but like i did an event the other day and like they're playing through all my old music and hearing it definitely feels good because it brings back a lot of memories from that time period but um yeah i just i'm focusing on just putting out more and more stuff is there anything that's changed in your process? Like when you go into the studio today compared to when you were going into the studio back like during mm -hmm. like the blueberry era of all yeah. this? Um I, the way I record now is kind of similar to the way I recorded like Blueberry Fago, but um it's changed a lot over time. Like I like it kind of just depends on like my like what kind of like mood I'm in. I don't know like cuz sometimes I'll write it and sometimes I'll just like go in and just like freestyle it. But um, I know around, like, Blueberry Fago and stuff, I was, like, writing more. And I would just, like, go in and, like, already have something ready. And then I stopped doing that for a while, so I kind of just started doing that again recently. Were you writing to a beat, or were you just jotting down lyrics that just came It depends. Sometimes I'll write to nothing. Like, I'll just think of something in my head, and then sometimes I'll hear, like, I'll be write to a beat. And then even if I write to that beat, I might put it on a whole different beat, like, down the road. Can you explain the story behind Blueberry Fuego? Fago? Yeah, yeah. Fago? So. <laughs> it's a drink, isn't it, or something? Yeah, yeah, it's a drink. So, um, I mean, yeah, I just, I was in New York, and I originally put it on, just like I was just saying, like, I'll write to one beat, and then I'll put it to another beat. So, I like, I, I originally did it in the studio. I freestyled it to a beat, and then I didn't really like how it turned out, but I thought it could be a, a better song. And then uh, when I was in Seattle, I was at my uh, one of my friends' house, and we was recording. And I heard the beat, and I was like, "Oh shit! I have these. I have these lyrics. I could put on this." So in my head, I didn't like say it to the room, but I was just like, "Oh, that's what I'm gonna do." And then, uh, yeah, I did that. And honestly, like after that day, I never heard the song again until like two years later or something, like a year later, because I just forgot about it. I, I didn't even. I didn't really know like how good the song was at the time. I feel like that's a common thread. Like yeah, songs yeah. that are really timeless and great, yeah. they just for some reason or another end up sitting somewhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's the way that came out. So the way it came out was uh, like people just started calling me and texting me like, yo, like this song is like viral right now. And I was like, what song is that? Like, I don't even know what song that is. And like, I was seeing it was trending on Apple Music and stuff. And like, it was, wasn't even out yet. And then... I was like, oh, I, okay, now I remember when I made that song. I didn't even Wait, hold on, ever hold on. listen to the song. <laughs> How did the world get access to the song before you chose to give them access? I don't know. Fans somehow get the music, whether it's like one, like somebody I know like sending music out or like getting hacked or whatever. Like however they get the music, somehow they get it, though. So at what point in the process was that song leaked? Was it, it, was it mixed and mastered? Like was it final? No, it was just the, probably the first version we had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do you change it after that, or is that version just the so version I, forever? I ended up adding a second verse because I didn't have— at first I just had one verse and then the hook, and so I went back and added a second verse to release it, but— 
And what's yeah. it like having a song like that blowing up during the pandemic? Because you can't really take full advantage of it, right? Yeah, so uh, so it was blowing up like right before COVID. And then um, I was on tour at the time. I was in Europe and it was like going crazy. And I was, I just, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to perform it. And then the cr whole crowd knew the, all the lyrics. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then so I was like, all right, so this is it's bigger than I thought it was even at the time before it even came out. Why do you think a song like that connected? What was it about that record? I don't know. I think maybe it was just catchy and like it was fun. And I think it was like right before the summer. So mm -hmm. just a fun song for people to, I don't know. Is there something that like <clears throat> that song has that you tried to carry with you as you make music again or? No, nah, I mean, the thing is with music, like at least for me, like, yeah, I try not to focus on like what I've already done. It's more about just like whatever's coming out at the time. Cause like you never, and this is for anybody, like you never know when like a song is gonna be good or not. Like you don't know, like you could try your hardest to make this song the best song you've ever made, but the world might not like it. So it's just like putting the music out and however you think works the best. And like, even when you think this song is the one, other people might think the opposite. So can't focus on like, oh, I'm trying to make more stuff like that feels like this because it's just it might not work the way you want it to have you always just been making music for yourself yeah i mean i just make what i think sounds good i try to just make what i think sounds good and just put it out i don't know <laughs> i try not to focus on like you know how big the song is gonna be or like whether like i think it's gonna be a t i know a lot of people like be like oh this song will be perfect on tiktok and stuff like i don't i don't really think like that i think just because at the end of the day, it's like, it's art, it's what represents me. So I just want to put out how I feel and like what I think is good. Yeah. So how how would you describe the, this new Lil Mosey and how, how'd you get to this sound? Um, I mean, a few, I mean, there's a few reasons. There's a few reasons I chose to like make, a, you know, go in the direction I'm going. I feel like, I mean, honestly, it's not really too different than, yeah, it's like, a little more like you know it's a little different it's a little different it yeah. is <laughs> but like i've always you know made melodic shit so it's like it's, it's it's different though but i don't know i just uh recently well there's a few things like one like rap music in general like i haven't really like been listening to honestly that much and it's not that i don't want to like and i'm not trying to disrespect any rappers out there i mean i'm i make rap music too so but I just don't, it doesn't really make, feel, make me feel as good as it did before, mm -hmm. like when I hear it and stuff. So it's like, it's been like, kind of like, not boring, but just like, I don't know, just something about it just doesn't really like, yeah. affect me the same way. So, I mean, definitely down the road, I definitely plan on dropping some rap music, but I don't know, I just, yeah, just wanted to do something different. And also like, I want the music to represent who I am today. Cause I mean, tomorrow I'm gonna be a different person. Like every day I wake mm -hmm. up feeling a little different. So, like if in a week I want to drop a rap song, like I'll drop a rap song. Rap song. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to, you know, represent who I am and like I want to give it more like of a substance of something in music. And just yeah. can you not get that substance through rap? No, you can. You can. It's just like um my type of like rap song is like just a life that I'm not really in living right now. Like, I'm not, like, I don't really go out. I don't, like, I'm not around, like, a lot of people. I'm not getting high, getting drunk, so, like, I feel like when I make rap music, that's kind of, like, the topics, and, like, that shit's fun. Don't get me wrong, like, it's fun, and I like making music like that, and I think one day, like, I might, but real soon, I don't know. I wonder what, like, a rap song would sound like true to, like, your current situation as opposed to this, like, life not, that people think you need to live, right? Because yeah, yeah. isn't that a big thing? Like, rap portrays this idealized or yeah. really traumatized, really, I mean, in a bunch of ways, kind of, like, depending on where it sways. Like, you know, it, it like, it projects a lifestyle that's yeah, yeah. not necessary all the time. Yeah, yeah, or exactly. Ever. Like, when, when you drop a rap song, you're automatically put in a box and, like— huh. I don't really want to be mm -hmm. boxed in. Like, so even though one day I definitely plan on dropping rap music again, I want to like show people that I'm more than just like, you know, the, cause right when they look, no matter what, like when they, like I just started realizing like I'll be out with people and like I'll like meet people and it's like people that I don't, I want people to like, you know, respect me as like who I am. Cause I'm not like, 
the when you look at me and I have like jewelry on and like the grills and stuff that people just assume like I'm a certain person I'm a, I act a certain way and then the first thing they say is like they might not know my music at all or anything like that but they'll just be like oh you're a rapper and I'd be like well, like why <laughs> why why do you think I'm a rapper like what what about me looks like a rapper I mean I guess like you could say I look like a rapper but so it's just about I just want to you know I'm tired of getting boxed into a certain like, genre just a certain yeah just a certain like everything yeah everything like I feel like everything you just get boxed in and it's like I just want people to know I could do more and like do what's, different things. What's pushing that though? What's pushing that desire to tell everybody why now? I mean, it's just I've been doing this for a long time, and I just feel like if if I'm not, I just feel like what's the point of putting out a song that isn't like actually what you're doing day to day? Like if if I make a song about going to the club or like you know, being around girls and stuff, like, if I'm not going, if I didn't go to the club in, like, the past however long, like, why am I going to make a song for the people at the club to be lit to? Not that, like, there's anything wrong with it, and, like, I love making fun music, and that's definitely going to be something I put out in the future, but I just feel like right now, like, who I am today is, like, this this music represents that, so at least for now, the time being, until, like, I decide something new is... Or something different to go down a different way. I don't know. I feel like music you can do that. Like, oh yeah. There's no yeah. like. There's no rules. I guess so. Like, if I want to make a rap song today, I can make a rap song today. If I want to make a it's country about, song tomorrow, I'll, you can. Why not? It's <laughs> about where you're at in life and what yeah, best yeah. suits your that the temperature for who you are at that moment and yeah, yeah. the stories you want to tell and it's a bunch of stuff. But it's all you. You know, mm -hmm. it's not about anybody else but you. Exactly. I think that's like a big thing. People, people do things for other people and the reality is you should kind of really make art for just yourself. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that's the that's the best way because it's like I'm, you're listening to me because I'm telling you what I'm doing and like this is like who I am and like Blueberry Fago at the time, like that's exactly who I was and like I wasn't trying to be nobody else. So like if I'm making a certain type of music, I want it to be like who I, who I am. Like, what was the biggest me. thing that changed in your life after that song? Because, like, by all accounts, that's the biggest song you have, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, um, just cross genres. I mean, there's a like, there's a bunch, but, like, that's huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like, yeah, throughout the years, you could definitely, like, each time it gets bigger. Like, I know, like, I remember when, like, I first came up, like, my first song that ever, like, blew up. And then from, then the next song, and then Blueberry Fago, like, you could feel, like, the difference in, like, how people, one, how people treat you, like, how many people are, like, noticing you and how many people recognize you. And when you go somewhere, like, it's not the same as it was, like, even just a month ago. So after Blueberry Fago, it was definitely, like, it went from, like, okay, people know who I am to, like, every time I go anywhere, like, people look at me and want to, like, you know. Totally. What so, is it like from a session perspective after that? Even though we're in the middle of COVID, so it's kind of weird to make mm -hmm. music, right? Like... Does anything creatively change? I mean, there was things I had to, like, work through in my own head, like... Of course. I mean, even having a... Like, yeah. the bar is set in a whole new direction. Because, yeah, I mean, the bar is definitely set up here. So once you hit that, it's like you have to keep trying to hit that. And, I mean, for for a little bit, I don't... There was, okay, uh, Taz Taylor, He he's a producer... And he he said it to me. He said it sounds. I was in a studio with him a little bit after Blueberry Fago, and he said to me, he said, "It sounds like you're chasing a hit right now, and that's gonna fuck you up." And I said, and after that, I was like, "Okay, yeah, that's facts." Like that actually, shout out, shout out, bro, because that I, that kind of stuck with me, and I was like, "Yeah, like I was trying to forcing myself to try to make the best song I could possibly make instead of just like and having fun with it." And like that's when the best music comes out is when you're just having fun with it and just doing. What feels natural. It's true. But, like, even with Blueberry, like, do you, like, do you feel something different when you cut it? No, nah, not really. <laughs> really? I feel like you don't know a song. You're like, you don't really know. Like, you, because, like I was saying, like, you could feel like this song's the big, gonna be, my, like, the biggest song you've ever dropped, and then nobody likes it. Like, so you don't know. Like, and then you'll make a song that everybody likes, and you don't really know the difference, honestly. It's like, it's weird. Hello, beautiful human. Every year, millions of gamers experience IGSS, inadequate gaming setup syndrome. Luckily, 
a cure has been found. You have to go beyond. With the Vibersonic Mattress by Beyond Sleep. This thing has six built-in subwoofers, USB ports for charging, LED lights so you never stub your toe. It gives you an acoustic massage when you want it, plus adjustable degrees of comfort. This right here is the best way to game ever. Hear your IGSS today at beyondsleeptech.com. Why was <laughs> One Too Many the first song to like usher in this new um, era of what we're yeah. Like, what's in front of us now? Like, what you're doing today? Uh, well, I mean, so Life Goes On was supposed to be the first one. And uh, it just was, there was just a lot of time, and it just felt like time was going slow. And I was I was recording, and I made the song that day, and I was like, okay, I just want to share this. So people know, like, there's more coming, and it's not just, like, once. Because, like, for a while, like, it's been, like, one song, and then I'll go away for like another year mm -hmm. and then come back drop a song and then go away for another yeah. year so it's like I want people to know like this time I'm back and I'm gonna keep releasing a lot so I was like and I'm independent now so I was like why not just put it out like there's no there's no body <laughs> telling me I can't so I was like well guys I just made this today I want to put it out like wasn't really too much thought going into it it's just like but that song is definitely one of my like it was a like a real story it was real like real feeling going into it so both of them right but one too yeah. i mean one too many oh, before we get into the story of it how many songs did you make for this new mm -hmm. era like is it an album are we leading to an ep i don't even know yeah, what yeah. so do. so yeah i'm dropping an ep soon sick yeah yeah so real soon real soon so is so that's 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 the first the first you know for the summer just to have you know music out through the through the first half of the year. But I'm dropping an album in the fall, so it's gonna be a lot of music this year. So how many songs are you making all together? Do you plan to make? I'm just gonna keep making music. Whatever makes it makes it. But I mean, there's gonna be seven on the EP. And how many songs did you make to get to seven? Honestly, I made a lot a lot of different stuff because I mean even. Last year, like, the music I was making was not even similar to the music I'm making today. Like, I mean, similar in a way, but, like, yeah, just a different direction. I just feel different. Like, I don't know. I just feel like every month that goes by, like, I'm on, I start thinking different and doing different things. Like, I don't know. This time in my life is, like, weird. Yeah, you're young. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. You're only 22, right? Yeah, 22. You lived a lot of life in 22 years, huh? Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What does it mean to say life goes on? I mean, yeah. I mean, everybody goes through stuff, like, and I've been through some stuff. And you start forgetting, like, that even though in the moment it feels like the worst thing in the world, it feels like when you're going through something in the moment, it feels like it's lasting forever. And it feels like you're in that moment forever. But then you, a month later, you start getting over it and you're over it and then you realize, okay, life goes on. So I was, when I put in the song, like, it was kind of like, that's where I'm at in life. Like, in the moment where it's like, okay, life goes on, like, we'll be all right. Why'd you, when'd you make the song? January. January. Yeah. Did you make it because you needed the message or because you finally realized that life goes on? I think I finally realized that life goes on. And like, in the the first line of the song, I say one disaster after next. I'm not complaining. I'm just stressed. Because there was, like, because even though, like, I'm trying to remind myself that life goes on, like, I'm still, like, dealing with stuff, and I'm still, like, not where I want to be at. And, like, when it comes to everything, just, like, even mentally, like, where I want to be mentally and stuff. So, like, it also is just a reminder to myself because, like, I've just seen it from, like, what I've gone through and, like, to where I'm at now, like, that I see that life goes on and, like, where I was a year ago, two years ago, like, I feel a hundred times better. So just to continue to remind myself and to remind people and tell people because I know a lot of people are going through stuff. So it's just... Were you making music, throughout, like, like consistently over the last two years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot. A lot of different stuff. Is there, you've been, dude, you, I was briefed on your story. You've been through a lot of stuff. You've mm -hmm. lived a lot of life. Yeah. In the last few years. It's wild. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, does that stunt how you make music or does it change the, the I mean, it clearly changes the product, right? Because it changes yeah. you as a person to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it definitely, at least for me, like, I just learned a lot. And, like, there was things that I would do in the past, like, just things that I, like, wasn't, wouldn't think before I did certain things. And, like, I just, like, was kind of, like, doing a lot. And I was just, like, partying, getting high and shit. So, like, there was just a certain lifestyle that I was living at the time that, like, now, like, after going through that, like, I, I don't even want to be around certain people now. Like, I don't really, like, I don't. Like, so I, just the life that I choose to live for myself now is just a lot different. So that definitely reflects in my music, I would say. There is truth to the phrase, like, you are the company you keep, right? Yeah. And I'm assuming that, like, while you're getting famous, a lot of people want to be your friend. Yeah, that's true. How do you weed out the bad ones from the good ones? I mean, I feel like you don't really know until shit until hits. you realize. You don't know they're bad until you yeah, just shit get hit across the, the face that they are not good for you. So... Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. It's really just like, just try to pay attention to what's going on around you, but you never really know until it happens. What do you learn over the last few years that you take with you and carry with you? Um, that like, I mean, you only got yourself in a way. Like, you got yourself. Yourself is obviously, you got God. Um, your parents, of course. But, I mean, at the end of the day, like, Whatever happens in your life, like, you're going to be the one that's going to have to deal with it. So, like, just make sure you set yourself up in the best way possible because, like, no one else is going to do it for you. So, like. What does it mean to set yourself up in the best way possible? Just in every situation, I would say. Like, not even just, like, money situation. I'm talking about, like, just, like, like emotionally and just everything. Just totally. make sure you are, like setting yourself up to be in a position where you won't have to, like, regret anything or, like, feel like you should have did this and should have did that. Because I feel like you start getting so, like, sucked into a certain, like, situation that you're in and, like, it feels like it's going to last forever, but it, it it might not. You know, some things do, but a lot of things don't. So, like, just making sure you are at a point where, like, I don't know. I feel like it's just... Yeah, I don't know. That's a, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't have the best answer for that one. I get it. And by the way, like, it's not many people that I've ever, like, talked to mm -hmm. that had to, like, and I'm going to be very frank. We can do whatever. You had to, you had to prove truth, right, in a very mm -hmm. real way that I've never, like, ever firsthand had a, a conversation with somebody who's been through that, yeah. right, where... It, and it's all connected, I'm assuming, to even the people you were around. Like, you went through something that lasted quite some time, and you went to trial, and you had to be connected to a polygraph test, and mm -hmm. literally go, I mean, can, that, to be, to have to prove your truth, what, can you just tell me what that feels like genuinely? I mean, yeah, I feel like for anybody going through a situation like it's that. It's all we have, right? Like, is our yeah. honesty. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, like, yeah, I mean, like, I'm not going to say my situation was any worse than anybody else's, but when you're in front of, like, the whole world and then something like that happens and they start calling you something that you're not, like, it definitely feels like a million times, like, like worse than, like, anything I could imagine. But I definitely, I mean, it was it was a blessing in, in disguise. Like, at first, obviously, I didn't think it was, like, something I needed to go through. And, like, I was, like upset that I even had to go through something like that but then I like there was there was a lot of things I learned from it and like things that I would like better myself just after like going through something like that because like like I obviously don't ever want to go through something like that again and like just live just like the people I was around and like the situations I put myself into like something like that came from that so like it also falls on me that I have to surround myself around the right people and, like, I have to do the right things with my life. And, totally. Like, but by the way, like, those are things you learn as you exist in this world, yeah, yeah. right? Like, I feel like no matter what, like, who, yes. yeah, no matter what, like, you're going to go through things that's going to teach you a 
do this and not that. Oh, my God. A hundred percent in understanding that the people that you, you choose to have around aren't necessarily the people you think they may be. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And I think a lot of things happen in our life where we get clouded and we may see the best in people and give people the time of day and way too much of ourselves and trust and time or what have you. And that can lead into some shitty things. But yeah. by the way, everybody goes through that in their own way. Every situation yeah, yeah, yeah. is different, you know? Yeah, yeah. Realizing that people who you thought were good people are actually totally pieces of shit. Yeah, yeah. And could be the worst forms of human beings. Yeah. Yeah, like I've never like tried to like, you know, even speak on the person that was saying that about me because like at the end of the day, you know, people go through things and people say things that obviously it's not true, but I just know like people do go through that. Like there's actually a lot of people that do go through that. So I, that I was also able to learn like a lot about the, because I obviously like you know as especially being a man like you don't really think about like like women that go through that but after going through that I've learned and I've like went to different like I've met with charities and I've like talked to people and like learned a lot about the what goes on in this world and like there's so much stuff that we don't know about that is like it was I'm glad I was able to to really f- see yeah like I don't know because now I have like in my heart, like, I have sympathy for a lot of people that I didn't even really know existed Mm -hmm. that I see, like, this happens every day, like, on a true, like, for... Yeah. For a lot of people, so it's, like, it's sad. It's sad. And, by the way, I was referencing more the... I don't know the full... I I was literally... I don't know the full scope of it. There's... The information I have is very limited in what's on the internet. Yeah. I was more talking about the person you were with, because it was you and one other guy, correct? Mm -hmm. Well, it was a... It was a party... So it was a lot of people. There was like 30, 40 people there. In a and, cabin. Yeah. And like, I wasn't even near the, I wasn't even near the situation that happened. And so like. Really? Yeah, I wasn't. So it's like, I just got, my name just got brought up into it. And so I got dragged into it too. But um, yeah, I mean. I was like, how do you view those two years? Do you feel like it was two years of your life that was wasted? Or do you feel like it was something like everything happens for a reason type situation? Yeah, I mean, for, for definitely for a, a, a long time, I was, like, I was, like, upset. And, like, I felt like, I felt like I didn't deserve it. And, like, I still don't know if I deserved it to that extent, but clearly I needed to go this, through something like mm-hmm. that to, to like, change some of the things I needed to change for myself, to even to have, like, a long-lasting life and career. Like, because I just feel like if you spend every day not focused on like what truly matters like for yourself it's going to catch up to you one day so it was I mean I think I think I needed to learn some lessons from it Mm -hmm. I don't know if it needed to be that harsh but yeah for real but it happened so there's nothing really so you you were genuinely just at a party and you had no interaction with these two and you got roped into this no I mean we was around each other all night but like Whenever this happened, like, I was nowhere around yeah. the situation. So, yeah, I mean, I was there. I was in the, I was in the, in at the party, but, like, whenever the situation happened, I wasn't there. Got it. So, I mean, I mean, that's, that's why I was found innocent, but. Yeah, you, and you're the most famous person at the party. Yeah. Your name comes up. Interesting. Really sorry that that happened to you. Sorry. Thank you. What's it like going through this, seeing everybody on the internet attacking you, trying to bring you down, and you're just sitting there like, oh, it wasn't me? Is it yeah, hard to deal I mean, with? It's tough because, I mean, I, don't, I, like, I didn't know the best way to deal with it. And, like, like, I didn't know, like, if I should, like, go on the internet and be like, this wasn't me, like, da 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 And, like, so I just, I just did the first thing I could think of, and I just, like, just went just deleted Instagram and I was like, I just got to stay away from this. And I didn't leave my house for like two months. I didn't leave my house. I was like, I'm, and then the first time I left my house, I was like, just, uh, I forget where I was, but then like people started yelling some shit at me and I was like, damn, like, so I went back in the house. I didn't come out for like another two <laughs> weeks. I was like, wow, this shit's crazy. Cause I, I didn't, I couldn't tell if it was how real it was. And then mm-hmm. I went outside for the first time. And it was real. And it was real. So I was like, all right, let me go back inside. <laughs> And then, like, I don't know, just slowly I just started, like, all right, let me just go here, go there, let me talk to this person. And then I finally started getting over it, but it was it was tough at first, but I kind of got used to it. Do you 
care about letting the world know that you took a polygraph and you passed with flying colors? I mean, like... And the I, justice system and all the scales of justice in our society have found you not guilty. I mean, of course I'd want the world to know that. I mean, because I feel like after all the bad things that came on the internet, none of the, like a lot of the good stuff didn't ever pop back up for people. And that's like, that's just how the internet works. So that's why I never really like kind of stressed it because I just know like that's just how it works. But of course, like, but I just try to move on now. Like, what? I'm, I'm a, well, you're moving on to your music, right? Literally, yeah, yeah. quite literally moving on to your music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why is that important? Why is that the primary vehicle? Like, has has music always been the primary vehicle for emotion for you? Yeah, I mean, that's. I feel like that's the best way for me to at least, like, kind of, like, because, like, I'm not really the type of person to tell people, like, to be with somebody and just be like, oh, this is how I feel. Like, I'm upset about this, da 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 So, like, the, one of the only ways I kind of talk about, like, what I'm going through and like whether it's a good thing or a bad thing like is through my music so it's definitely like a kind of therapy for me does that therapy mean something different today than it did before um I definitely I mean kind of similar but obviously like I've just when I was 16 I hadn't been through as many situations as I have now so like certain things I say in my music like it, and also I've just been yeah I've just been through a lot of different like more situations that when I would say certain things when I was 16 I didn't actually really know what I was talking about as much as I do now <laughs> so if I say it now like it really means something because like this is actually like I know for a fact like, what I'm talking about yeah do you know what manifestation like do you believe in it oh yeah yeah of course I mean I feel like yeah it's like I mean I feel like I'm here because I manif like I I spoke it into existence and obviously like I was blessed to be in the situation, but in Seattle, you talked about being on the Zach. No, you talk. You, you really did. I mean, you've been working on this craft for yeah. a long time. I mean, yeah. When I was fourteen, I was like, I'm gonna do this. Like, I don't. I didn't really have any other plan. Like besides this, like I was like, this is what it's gonna be. Like, so you knew. I understand that feeling very, very, very much. What are you thinking? How long after finding out you were not guilty did you record flu game? So I had flu game. Ready, but I added a second verse on it though too, just like Blue Ray Figure. But I had it, I already had it. Cause so flu game, I made flu game. The reason I wanted to put out flu game is cause the day I found out, cause when I, I found out, like I didn't know about this, the, I didn't know I was getting like charged with anything until like TMZ posted that. Oh, what, really? I woke up, yeah, I woke up in Miami, I was in Miami, and then I don't think I've really told this story either, but cause a lot of people thought like I was like missing a court date or something, but like that wasn't it. Like, I've lived in a lot of different houses I've lived over the years. So, like, whatever they sent to come tell me I had to do something, like, I didn't see it. So I woke up in Miami, and my manager comes in and, like, shows me. He's like, look, they're about to post this. And I said, what are you talking about? I was like, this is not, like, there's no way. And then he was like, and I, he was like, yeah, like, I wouldn't get on Instagram today. I would stay off of social media. And I was like, all right. And then people just started calling me and texting me. I'm like, what the fuck? And I was and and yeah, that's that's the same way I found out. I found out the same way everybody else did. And that was 2021? 2021. 2021. Yeah. And so that night I went to the studio, and that's why I made Flu Game. So that's why I was like, I want to put this one out, because it's like, why it was you, the same day. What was pushing you to make music? I was just like, I needed to like, do something. Because I was like sitting around all day, and I was just like depressed. And I was like, I needed just... That's the only thing I really know like to like escape from things. So like... That was the first thing I thought of. I was like, I just need to do something to get my mind off of this. Wait, I'm trying to get my timelines right. So that was 2021 you found out when your manager showed you the TMZ article, and that's mm -hmm. when you recorded Flu Game. But didn't Flu Game not come out until 2023? Yeah. So you recorded it the I day you found it and out, and you released it two years yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Because, I mean, like, I feel, like, cause like I was saying, like, I would feel different mm -hmm. every day. And, like, how I felt when I first—because the first thing I put out was just on YouTube because— my label at the time that I was signed to didn't wouldn't wouldn't let me release any music, so that's that's another reason why I didn't I haven't dropped a lot of music since then because like I wasn't really allowed to, they wouldn't let me. So, so when I was I was like fuck it, I'm gonna put something on YouTube. I felt like flu game was a little too like sad, mm -hmm. and I didn't really want people to like 
I didn't know the best way to like go about it. So I just like was doing what I thought. And then by the time the case was actually over, I was like, I want to do flu game. So years later. So yeah. it, it, it starts where it ends. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. In that moment, what do you think? Do you think that like you're going to fight this and win? Or do you think that like, I mean, there was no other way. Like it's the truth. I feel like the truth has to come back to light. Like the truth has to, be in some type of favor like totally and, and, but also there's many cases yeah in our society yeah. where it just doesn't matter uh, yeah i know that's true but i just you know try to keep my head up and stay positive you have to. the best way i could but also i was dealing with it for like two three years so like by then like i was just i've already been through all the emotions and been through everything that, like obviously when you actually go into the courthouse and like sit there and like hear stories or like sh- the mo- like just made it was it was crazy. I'm like I don't want to talk about it too much, but um, you're like it, it hits you, it hits you again like a lot different when you're actually in in the in the room hearing all this stuff. Yeah, I get you 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 re you either like <laughs> relive it or hear for the for the first time out of. I was sitting mouth. there like, what? What is this? What are you talking about? I was. I'm just glad the jury saw it like I did because mm-hmm. that was it was it was not it was not <laughs> it didn't even sound right it was crazy and there was people that came that was there and said he was with me because I was with other people at the time that they said this happened like so like and those people obviously came and said like no it's just there's no way there's no way do you ask in that moment why you of course I've definitely I asked that a bunch of times why like why like why do I have to go through this shit but I just learned like asking those questions like doesn't really solve anything. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, but I mean, I think I I mean at the end of it though, like where I'm at now, like I'm 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 cool with it. Like I know like in like I feel like I'm a better person today than I was two years ago, three years ago. So and I think I'm I'm able to spread like a a better positive message. And I just think mentally like like. Just where I'm at today is just a lot like healthier and more positive. So I think like it kind of turned me into like a person that can be better for my fans and like the people I care about. So I think it it worked out at the end of it. That's what matters. And we get art, right? Yeah. Like a lot of life and a lot of experience yeah. is the reason we get some great art. Yeah. It's hard to like wrap our minds around and like make light of any situation, but like it is true. Like mm-hmm. you know, art is the product. Yeah, it's cool. What are you thinking? Well, you kind of touched on why you're making music the way you're making it now, but what do you have to say to all your fans that are like, "We miss the old Mosey"? Yeah, I mean, of course, I want to make everybody happy, and like, I'm not, I'm like, I, I would never not drop like what my fans want to hear, but like forever, but. I just feel like right now, like, I feel like I got to do what, what feels right. Yeah, it feels right for me. But, I mean, yeah, I think one day soon, like, I'll definitely give the rest of the fans what they want. Mm-hmm. But I want them to, to like, want to be here for everything, not just, like, a certain sound that I, I drop. I want them to be here for everything. Try it out. Give it your time and energy. Lil Mosey's music is waiting for you. It's on Amazon Music. You can grab it on rotation, too. Um, it's all down there. Just just waiting for you. What is it like being your own boss? You like it? Yeah, it feels good. I mean, <laughs> bro, like like when I was saying like they wouldn't let me drop music or anything, like where I've been independent basically for a while. So like I was doing this shit on my own for a while. So like now that I'm actually fully independent and I own everything and I'm the one like running this shit. That's crazy. It feels good. It feels good. Yeah. You should be proud of that. Yeah, no, definitely. Not only you know, the ability to through honesty, bounce back and fucking create art that's incredible. But to also be able to own all the things that you make. Uh-huh. How many people say that and yeah, can yeah. say that? Yeah, that's true. It's fucking huge. Mm-hmm. It's really amazing. Yeah, and I'm young. I have so much life left, so, like, yeah. a lot of music to make and put out. So, like, I'm not really worried. The most. An EP on the way in an album, too. Lil yes, Mosey's sir. album. And the entire discography will, discography is there waiting for you, but the album will be there too when it is released in the fall. But uh, 
hopefully an EP soon. What are you thinking? You said Olivia Rodrigo inspired your new music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tried not to... When you was asking about the new music, I was trying not to talk about her because I, you know, I don't want her to feel like I don't know her that well. So like yeah. I met her like once, I don't know her like so I was I wasn't trying to like I don't want her to feel like I'm trying to you know like talk about her for views or anything yeah. like that. That's not the case. But like so this is the last time I talk about her. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do it. But <laughs> be, so I made life goes on in January and then like three days before it, I was just because I told you like I haven't really been listening to rap like that like. So I was just trying to find, like, other things out there that, like, might inspire me. And, like, I was listening to it. I I just was like, all right, let me just listen to this. And I was listening to her last album. And I was listening to it, like, every day for, like, three days. So just, like, front to back. I was like, okay, this shit's hard. I was like, mm -hmm. I fuck with it. So yeah. I was like, fuck it. I want to try some shit like this. Because I was like, that, like, rock, like, alternative, like, pop shit is, like, I was like, that shit sounds cool to me. So I was yeah. like, all right, I'm going to try it. I'm gonna try it. I mean, totally different producers that you have to call up, right, to make a record like this. Well, the so the producer that originally me and me and my homie St. Patrick, we've worked a lot in the past. He's from Seattle too, but it just so happens that he's able to make some stuff like that too. And then Sick. after me and him made it at my house, uh, we brought it to Harvey Mason Jr. Cool. He's a big producer, and he like finished the post production and just like you know sauced it up, but. Amazing. And you get to make all those decisions. Yeah. Are you working with just one person on this entire body of work? or No, nah, it's a few different producers. Um, so St. Patrick is a big one. Uh, my homie Foreign got him. Uh, we did a lot together. Um, my homie Arjun, we did some. Mm. But yeah, there's a, there's a few, there's a few, uh, a few producers. There. And are you going to each one with the same sort of emotional kind of criteria? Um. Nah, so I, I don't I don't try to when I like when I go in and like I try not to tell producers like bring me some sad shit or bring me some like lit shit. Just like I just tell them like this is like the vibe I'm going for, like this is the style. Just send me some stuff like that, whether it's like some upbeat, fast tempo or like slow shit. Like, cause I, I mean today like at five p.m. I might want to make some sad shit, and at nine p.m. I want to make some happy shit. So. I just go in like fresh like every time I go in the studio I just listen to things and just kind of see how I feel when in the moment well that producer may not even be with you in the, the session right they just send you beats and you do it on your own yeah time? I personally like I've always kind of been like this but like definitely recently like but I've, I've always kind of been like it because I don't really like getting unless I know the producer like well and like me and him like I know for a fact if I like go to the studio with him we'll probably make some good stuff I just don't like getting in the studio with the producer and like feeling like I'm, we're forced to make a good, like, a oh, hit. Because then, like, it just, there's a, a expectation already, like, before we even step in the studio. So I'd rather you just send me stuff, and if I like the stuff, then I'll record on it myself. And, like, recently I've been recording myself, just me by myself in the room. So I'll just have people send it to me, and I'll just make it, like, by myself. Super personal. Yeah. How do you know it's good? I just, I mean, like, that's, I, 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 when I hear it, I'm like, this is good. This is good enough to drop, in my opinion. And then whatever, however the world sees it, that's how they see it. But Pretty cool. Pretty cool that you're in your, your own boss. You call your, your own shots, really. It's pretty wild. Sick. Playing a little good guitar, I see. Picking up a guitar, trying to learn that. Yeah, yeah. I'm learning. I'm learning. Yeah, that's cool. Look at um, you. See, I feel like you can merge the worlds, dude. That's the goal. Give me pop punk with rap. Yeah, no, I got, some, I've mixed some, I've done, a, I've I've experimented a lot with that sound. Just like, I have something that, it sounds like if I was on a rap song, and then we just remade the beat to like, some more like, alternative like, yes. rock cool. shit. I've done, yeah, I got, I got a bunch of stuff on the way. Please. Yeah, yeah. See, like, I kept thinking when you were talking before, like, at the top of the conversation, just about rap not fitting where you're at today. All I kept thinking is like, you know, then like. I don't like rewrite the rules of rap, which yeah, I feel yeah. like not it's, many people ever do, or like it yeah, happens yeah. very infrequently. I can make the case that, like, you know, when you first came, like, with like people used to call you a mumble rapper, mm -hmm. right? Like, like duh, yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. those interviews, and you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I mumble, whatever. But like, <laughs> the, rap doesn't get rewritten very often, yeah. you know? Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, even even with life goes on, like, if I wouldn't have said it was a pop song, like. Yeah. Or if the genre wouldn't have said pop and it would have said rap, they wouldn't have said nothing. Like, cause like, if you hear the verses and stuff, it kind of sounds like I'm rapping on it. Totally. Cause at the end of the day, it's still gonna be me. Like, 
it's still my song. Like it's not like I'm a like I'm not a I'm not like fucking Justin Bieber or something. I'm not gonna be out here singing and shit. Like yeah, I'm singing, but like at the end of the day, like I'm still gonna keep my same my same swag and my same style on the no matter what I do. Did you go through a breakup recently? Yeah, I did. So sorry. That was one too many. What? The song. The, the song. song uh, one too many. I thought it was a breakup song. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. It's so funny, like, we, we got this all validated via a TikTok slideshow that alluded to your breakup. Oh, yeah? Yeah. TikTok. Yeah. TikTok, yeah. But really, the songs are what tell the story. Huh? The songs are what tell the story. Yeah, 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 that's true. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, everything I'm trying to do is, like, what what is going on in my life. Like, I wanted to really tell stories and really, like, let people in on what's more. I want to show people, like, me and like just be personal with the fans and like give them a stronger reason to connect with me. So yeah. what, what's the deal? Do you own your entire discography or do you just own the new stuff you're making? I mean, I I own part of like Interscope. We're gonna get one day. One day I'm gonna get it back. But I mean, moving forward, yeah. Because yeah, you, you you upstream through them. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like that's just how. Because you have eight like, billion streams, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of streams. So I, you know, I own my percentage of it, and they own their percentage of it, and. But of this new music, oh yeah, it's me. Yeah, giddy up. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah! Thanks for showing me what's behind the grills. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've never seen like you know, I just see people with grills. I just I, I never like wonder what their real teeth look like. For some reason, I just think that that's their teeth. Yeah. That's it. I mean, for some people, yeah, some people permanently put them on their teeth. That's like, crazy. I would. I don't think I can handle that. I don't. Nah. I need a break from them sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You need to like you know, take them out, play guitar. Brush my teeth. That's a big <laughs> one. <laughs> that's like a huge one. Yeah, that's a big one. For I feel me. like dental hygiene is a huge, yeah, yeah. huge priority. That's that's definitely mandatory. Well, I thank you for giving us time today. Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys for having me. Come back for the EP and the album. Yep. Lil Mosey stuff is waiting for the entire discography and all that new stuff will be there down below on Amazon Music. Appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. Lil Mosey, everybody. Yep. <laughs>